Okay, this is video number four. This will be the last video in this series. Now, this is the one video, well, actually all of them, will be the one to uh, pose your professor in college or your physics uh, professor, anyway that you know that is supposedly an expert in either quantum mechanics, physics, or field theory. Okay, and they won't have an answer for you because they don't know. Because until I wrote the book on magnetism, nobody knew what magnetism was denotatively. Descriptively is one thing, denotatively is another. Of course, as I mentioned before, in countless dozens of others' videos, there's no such thing as magnetic attraction or magnetic repulsion as dielectric acceleration and force and motion, i.e. voidance and countervoidance. We have force and motion, inertia and acceleration. It is the case, I don't know if you know what a Gauss meter is, but it measures a magnetic flux. But analogously to uh, say that the water that's shooting in your face from the shower head is uh, the same as the exact same amount of flow that is draining at your feet is quantitatively correct but qualitatively incorrect so as I've shown you here before in the prior video let me spin up the gyroscope I spin, the, spin it up with a uh, Dremel tool sit here and spin and spin and spin forever not literally I mean ultimately even though I uh, it's precision gyroscope and I've lubed the bearings on it. Uh, it'll eventually spin down due to friction since it does have an axle. Just sit here and happily spin, 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 and spin. But if I take it over here without touching it, get it really close to the wake front of the centrifugal divergent edge where force and motion exists, where denotatively magnetism exists, I have very, very rapid braking. Okay? So what's the difference? Why don't you ask your uh, physics professor? Because they want to have the answer for you. The only way you could see this is on a giant magnet. And this is as large as they come. It's a neodymium iron boron. It's a heavy, gigantic beast. I got no braking here. None. I have the exact same magnetic flux density as I do here, as measured with the Gauss meter, as I do here, with a variation of up to about 10%. But any Gauss meter will tell you that this is indisputable, irrefutable by anybody else on Earth. Period. It's irrefutable. Whip out the Gauss meter, that's exactly what you'll see. Same flux density here as you do with the dead center here. But a Gauss meter doesn't know the difference between centripetal convergence, i.e. acceleration, increasing inertia, and centrifugal divergence, which is the point of force and motion. That is the difference between this spinning nearly in perpetuity, other than the, the friction from the axle bearings, and this. I'm not touching it, I'm just getting it close. Wow, rapid braking. No touching. Rapid braking. What's occurring? As I mentioned in the prior video, we have a torus, a donut formation right here, begins right here, laps around to the other side, and the inverse of that is the hyperboloid, which exists right here like an hourglass, okay? You know what an hourglass like, looks like? Okay, we'll have the top bulb right here and the bottom bulb on the other side with the little choke point right in the dead center of this magnet. Not only the center here, but the center of the magnet, so about an inch and a half or so below where my fingertip is. This is something a Gauss meter cannot differentiate. You're thinking, well, this is a giant magnet. You're not measuring the same Gaussian flux here as I am here. Yeah, that's exactly what you're measuring with your Gauss meter. But, listen up, your Gauss meter does not know the difference between this and this. It only measures flux. Okay? Just like a shower, I'm using an analog here, you know, you turn on the shower, you know, it's going to be draining. Assuming you have the plug pulled for the drain, right? Okay. Well, that water coming out of the shower head is not the same qualitatively as the same stuff that is going down the drain. Okay, there are two completely different principles. One is increasing like a tornado here, analogously. What we have here is a hyperboloid of centripetal pedal convergence, and what we have here is centrifugal divergence. That is why this gyroscope will sit here and spin in perpetuity other than the friction on the bearings at the dead center, and over here, er, throws the brakes on. Why? Because this is denotatively magnetism, right here. This edge right here, and on the inverse side. And this little point right here, you can see this underneath the ferrocell. Okay? I showed you this. 
underneath the ferro cell. A hypertrochoid pattern. So what defines magnetism? Reciprocating processional hyperboloid. All of this is my discovery. It's in the book, and the book is free. Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. It's on archive.org in the third edition. The fourth edition will be out soon. Don't ask me what soon is. Everybody keeps asking, well, how soon? How soon? Oh, it's soon, okay? Um, so, ask this to any physics professor, any, any PhD of uh, quantum mechanics or field theory, asking it, they will not have an answer for you. I will lay a thousand dollars right here. Boom. They won't have an answer for you. They don't know. To them, all they know is, well, a Gauss meter reads the same here as it does here. So this is magnetism and this is magnet. We have actually, it falls off in this midpoint and it increases right here. Actually, over the years on this magnet, you can see this uh, slight darkish line here. It's affecting the chromium plating. You can see that dark line right around an, an inch in. This is not a mark from it being handled. This is not a defect in manufacture. This appears due to the flux variance of the actual magnetism affecting the chromium plating in this magnet over the years. It's taken years for this to form, but you can see it right here, this slightly dark line. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. So, this is what I meant when I said that magnetism is not magnetism. According to a Gauss meter, we have uh, X flux here and X flux here, and they're both basically the same. Well, this is not magnetism. What do you mean it's not magnetism? The Gauss meter reads it the same. Should be the same here and same here. Yes, of course that's magnetism. This is one giant honking dangerous ass magnet. Uh, it's all magnetism. No, it's not. Mother Nature doesn't work that way. Everything works off force in motion and inertia and acceleration. And everything follows a path of curved linear force in motion or curved linear inertia and acceleration. Where the hell do you think the force in motion vectors of the uh, flux density, i.e. the loss of inertia, because that's what magnetism is, as Faraday himself called it, magnetism is the dielectric field. Dielectric field. Dielectricity, inertia, ether, same thing. Different words, both describing the same thing, dielectric inertial plane. Same thing with magnetic viewing film. You can actually see a line right at the midpoint of this magnet all the way around. Because the only way you can see this is using this huge honking magnet. Because the gyroscope is already fairly large, and most magnets are not larger than the flywheel is gyroscope. So you have to have a huge honker like this to see what I was talking about. So ask your physics professor, ask anybody you want, and have them explain that to you. And they won't have an explanation. Because this, they will tell you, is magnetism. But it's not. It is actually the... Uh, I'm trying to think of an analog. People want me to dumb it down. It's like, my God, it's already dumbed down enough as it is. I mean, how do I dumb it down? Okay, if this is uh, the worm, then over here we have the butterfly. Well, they're both kind of the same thing. Well, genetically they are. You know, we got the worm and the caterpillar, and then we have the butterfly. Okay, we have force in motion here. We have inertia and acceleration here. Well, they're both the same genetically. They're both the same. Nah, one of them is a worm, an ugly-ass worm. Another one's a gorgeous butterfly. Of course, this is an analogy, of course. Take it over here. Boom. Rapid deceleration. I think I accidentally touched it there. But nevertheless, we still have rapid deceleration. Rapid. Because we have a wake front of magnetic. Denotative magnetism exists here alone. Denotatively, what is happening here is the de evolution. Now, don't take that word de evolution too far. What we have is analogously the de evolution of magnetism from the other side, de evolving back into inertia. Right here. Okay? The same thing on the other side, from this edge to the center of the other side, the edge of the other side to the center of this side. Boom, right here. But a Gauss meter won't tell you that. And this is something that you'll not find in any book, and no professor, and or any PhD in, uh, in uh, field theory, quantum mechanics, general relativity, or even at the billion dollar Hadron Collider knows jack shit about this because they're all brain dead. All they do is regurgitate crap of the people that came before them and the people that are around them. They do not have thinking minds. They do not have a platonic methodology of thinking within their brains to understand how Mother Nature works. And uh, that's that simple. So, 
po- watch this, uh, have uh, pro- your philosophy professor, I mean your uh, physics professor, anybody watch this and have them explain it. And the best that they'll come up with, they'll either study, uh, stutter, uh, they'll wet themselves, and roll their eyes at you and not answer you, or give you, uh, blow smoke and BS up your ass. So those are the options that they'll give you. They'll uh, ignore you, they'll blow smoke and BS up your ass, or uh, they'll roll their eyes and say it's uh, explained somewhere in a book, you know. And of course none of those are answers, because they don't know. They don't know. But it's okay not to know. What pisses me off and what should piss you off is people that don't know, that tell you they do know, and then they blow smoke up your ass. Because those people are what uh, the ancient Pythagoreans called demons. Ignorance is a good thing, as long as you know you're ignorant. You're searching for answers. It's okay to be ignorant, as long as you're searching for answers. The search. Ultimately, you want to arrive at the destination. The search is a lot of fun. A lot of experimentation. A lot of dangerous magnets that hurt your eyeballs. And yes, leaning over this thing will hurt your eyes. Well, how does it hurt your eyes? It's due to chromatomes in your eyes, the same way that birds navigate. And I know uh, north from south. I explain that in other videos. But it's okay not to know. As long as you don't know. And you're seeking out the answers. But the people that blow smoke up your ass and tell you they know something, these people are demons. And a lot of them are found in colleges. They're not truth seekers. Now, that's a generalization, but it's a truism. Something that's generally true, but not always true, still a truism. That means it's generally accurate. Which means generally these people are demons. They're demons because they don't know, but they tell you they do know, and they blow smoke up your ass. These people are not truth seekers in the hardcore platonic sense. And I'm a hardcore platonist, baby. Like it or not. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. If you like this video, drop me a buck or two. Go tell me to jump off a cliff. Okay? Um, the book is totally free. There's no uh, strings attached. It's free on archive.org. The book's called Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, 4th edition, due out soon. Adios. Do svidanya. Uvidimsa.